Aloha. Aloha. It's an honor to be here. Uh, thank you, Pono, Stephen, David. Thank you very much. Um, Pono got one thing wrong. I did not graduate from University of Hawaii with a bachelor's. I, um, I didn't graduate. <laughs> I, got, I did graduate with my MRS degree. Uh, I met my wife there. And we got married in 1981, so I figured I had the job, I had the wife, so might as well get, back, get to work. But anyway, um, again, thank you very much. A lot of people wonder, what is Kualoa Ranch? Uh, Kualoa Ranch is a lot of different things. It's a cattle ranch. We have a lot of different... Uh, agriculture, we've got aquaculture, we've got farming. We're also a cultural site. Our cultural kind of relevance, importance uh, goes back to time immemorial. Uh, we do a lot of things today to honor that culture. It's a cherished open space, um, but it's also a movie site. Uh, this is a picture of one of the movie sites, one of the most, most popular movie sites we have down by the fish pond. We'll get into it later, but we've been, been the subject of uh, tons of different movies and TV shows. Uh, we're a really real estate company. Uh, we have a little bit of real estate on the mainland, uh, a little bit of commercial real estate. We have actually 70 houses uh, here, here on the ranch uh, that we rent out, all long-term rentals. We're an event company. Uh, we do all kinds of different things besides our day-to-day -day stuff. This is a picture of uh, 1994, Carlos Santana. We did 20 years of concerts out there. We do sports events. Uh, we, we do corporate events. We do all kinds of things. Uh, we do weddings. We do close to 200 weddings a year. And um, we're a visitor operation. That's uh, why most of you are here today. But we, we've, uh, and we'll go into the, the, the history of that too, we're, we're, um, we're, we're the 11th largest visitor attraction in the state right now, according to the Pacific Business News. So let's go back a little bit. Uh, told you all the different things about Kualoa Ranch is, but you know, I'd like to give you a little historical perspective on, uh, on, on where we came from so you get a a little better understanding of the journey that we've gone through to get to where we are today. So again, I mentioned in ancient times, Kualoa was a, was a sacred place. It was a, obviously a Hawaiian place everywhere where in Hawaii it was a Hawaiian place, but Kualoa had a special significance. It was a pu'uhonua, which is a place of refuge. It was the site of the Makahiki. There's numerous references uh, in, in literature and in, in legend uh, related to Kualoa. So it's a, so it's, it's, it's very steep in that part of the history. To fast forward, um, my ancestor, Dr. Garrett P. Judd, came to Hawaii in 1828 as a missionary doctor. Uh, he was a devout Christian, but he wasn't actually a missionary, he was a doctor. And uh, so he came to uh, Hawaii in 1828, practiced medicine, became a minister to the king, but in 1850, he bought some of the king's personal land. So this is actually the deed, uh, and signed by the king, Kamehameha III, deeding over the 622 acres of Kualoa to Dr. Garrett P. Judd. So this is a picture of Dr. Judd uh, and his wife, Laura. Um, and and the, the other picture is, is he with uh, Prince uh, Liholiho and Lot, King Kamehameha the third, uh, fourth and the fifth as a uh, minister of the, of the kingdom in a couple of different capacities, he actually took the two princes all the way to England, stopping along in America on the way and, and, uh, and to try to negotiate treaties. Uh, so that was a part of what he did in his, his tenure. So that's the uh, beginning of what we know as Kualoa Ranch was the purchase of Dr. Judd. Uh, this is a picture of Charles Judd, one of his uh, seven living children and, and his wife, Emily. Uh, Charles was the one that uh, expanded the ranch from uh, 622 acres of Kualoa. In 1860, he bought Ka'aava, which is a little over 2,000 acres, and that's on the north uh, of Kualoa, and then Hakipu'u Valley, which is on the, uh, on the south. And so 
By 1880, Dr. Uh, uh, Charles Judd had expanded the ranch to 4,000 acres and three ahupua'a, and that's basically what the ranch is today. I'm going through this because uh, Pono was asking me uh, uh, a number of different things, but um, you know, what's the biggest challenge? What's the biggest, uh, you know, uh, how do you get to where you're going? Well, part of how you get to where you're going is, is on what happened yesterday. And, and for us, it's uh, you know, our ancestors and, and the accomplishments that they all make. So it started with Dr. Judd, his son, Charles Judd. And this is a picture of my, my great uh, grandmother, Julie Judd, the older woman in the middle, my grandmother and my great aunt and my father and uh, my aunt and my uncle. So that was, that's three generations there, and so they're all to be attributed to you know, the success of the ranch. And uh, Julie actually uh, bought out all of her siblings, and so that was her mana'o, her, her intuition, whatever it was, and without her buying, all her, uh, buying out all of her siblings, uh, we'd probably have six or 700 owners now. So it was a really you know, forward thinking thing uh, luckily, my grandmother, my great aunt, my great aunt had no kids, and so all of the owners now, and there's less than 30 owners in the, in the ranch today, are descended from Rosamond Morgan. So we tried all kinds of different things uh, in, in years past. You know, uh, you may know anybody who, uh, let me get a show of hands. How many people are from here? Quite a bit, uh, but most of you, I'm sure, have driven by, you know, the sugar mill. That was the first sugar mill in Oahu, started in 1863. But throughout the years, there was all kinds of different things that, uh, that the ranch and the owners tried. This is a picture of uh, the Hakipu'u Valley side, and uh, it was, uh, it was, it was, it's all in pineapples. Uh, you can kind of tell it's a funny thing. Their agronomic practices weren't very good because they had the furrows going up and down. Whenever you do that in a big rain, it just uh, creates erosion. But pineapples was short-lived. Uh, we, uh, we had rice, we had peanuts, we had all kinds of different things that we tried throughout the years. And nothing really worked. And uh, the land is really not that good, except for you know, uh, uh, a little over 100 acres. So the only thing that really worked for the land from a productivity point of view was cattle. And so that's, uh, that's how it came down through the majority of the, uh, the, the generations. So the, the next thing we've got to take into account besides the history and how we got there is uh, what's the, what was the political landscape and what's the geographic situation. So this is an overview uh, of the ranch. Um, again, the Ahupua of Ka'a'ava to the north, Kualo on the middle, and Hakipu to the south. Uh, you can't really tell unless you really like maps, but about half of it is mountain, uh, and, and half the other half is uh, is is mostly cattle, but uh, you can see the large fish pond to the south and, uh, and Kualoa Park, you can see there too. And uh, that's, uh, that used to be part of the ranch and it was condemned for a park uh, in 1971 by the city and county of Honolulu. Uh, to the north, you can see Ka'a'ava Town. Uh, that was part of the ranch also um, after the war, which is, uh, which is a huge impact on the, on the family and the company. Uh, the military took over a, a lot of the ranch. Um, and so, but in retrospect, it all was really good because the military created a road that connected the north and south part of the ranch, and without that, we couldn't have the business that we have today. Um, but again, one of the things that happened throughout the years was, uh, you know, times were, you know, you have the, the Great Depression, that's a, that's a challenge. You have the war, that's a challenge. We're a land poor company, which means you got a lot of land but no money. What's going, what are you going to do? So uh, one of my ancestors uh, created the town of Ka'a'ava in the 40s, and so that's the north part. Um, so then you get the political overlay, uh, with, uh, with the majority of land being uh, you know, zoned ag two and the other half being zoned conservation. You really can't do anything with the conservation. Then you start to look at the, you know, what does the what does the county want, and uh, and and so this is a, just a picture of the cover of the Ko'olau Sustainable Communities Plan, and the county doesn't want growth here. Uh, they they don't want any, you know, a, a very much urban growth in either Ko'olau Poco or Ko'olau Loa, and we straddle those two. Uh, so Ka'aava's in Ko'olau Loa, which is a moku that's year in here, and Ko'olau Poco goes from the ranch all the way to Makapu Point. 
So the, the, the sustainable communities plan uh, basically said no, no uh, you know, urban growth. We want to uh, promote agriculture. We want to promote outdoor recreation. And so that's kind of a, that part of the landscape that we had to deal with. And, uh, and, and, and then in order for us to do anything significant, we, we had to get either a conservation district use permit, because we have a bunch of ocean front and we do stuff in the ocean, uh, or a conditional use permit or a special use permit. So those are some of the permit issues that we had to deal with. Um, so the other part, what does a family want? And, uh, and unlike a lot of uh, um, other large Kama'aina um, companies or even, uh, you know, large companies, you know, Bishop Estate in included, uh, Kamehameha Schools, some of them want to be the landlord. They don't want to take on risk. They say, just, you know, just we'll, we'll, we'll be a landlord. But our family said, we don't want to sell, we don't want to develop, and we want to run it ourselves. So that was kind of the, the marching orders that, that I was given um, when I first took over in 1981. Uh, on that, my first venture in 1981 was starting a leather leaf fern operation, and we lost 100 grand, so I'm lucky to still have a job. <laughs> So I didn't do a real, uh, you know, thorough SWOT analysis. You know, you grow and you learn SWOT later on, but we did, a, you know, a kind of a SWOT analysis as we're trying to decide what are we going to do? We want to run it ourselves. We're not going to uh, sell and we're not going to develop. So what are we going to do? So what our strengths were the beauty and the, and the, the diversity and the size of, of the ranch and, and the, the Hawaiian culture. The weakness, and because we were looking at uh, the visitor industry at the time, uh, we had been doing trail rides, and that was the only thing we did, and we did a very small amount of them on horseback. But that's that's the, the direction that we are going. So, from a weakness point of view, we're pretty far from Waikiki, and uh, and actually, uh, a lot of people here in Hawaii and a lot of on, on Oahu think that Kualoa is just about as far away as Maui. Some people really think it's a, it's a challenge to get all the way out here. And then again, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, we, we really didn't have uh, uh, you know, any resources, and, and so that was, a, that was a weakness. The opportunity was definitely in the visitor market. Um, you know, at, at that point in the early 80s, the Japanese were by far spending the most money, and they were dominated by the travel agency business. Uh, and you know, as a as a market grows more, matures, the individuals in the market get a little more independent. But at this point, they were definitely uh, con not controlled, but they were uh, they were influenced heavily by the the agency business. So the threats that were facing us and our family and our company were estate taxes, which are 55 percent uh, at the at the at the level of this kind of asset, and uh, and so. We had to do something because two thirds of the ownership was already in their 90s, and uh, so, like a lot of places, a lot of old family companies, if the only way to pay the, the estate bill is to sell land, we didn't want to do that. So we had to get going quickly. Uh, another one was government condemnation. The, the government condemned our property, uh, 150 acres of the most valuable property we had in 1971. They tried again in 1986 and in 1990 two or three, I think it was, to condemn 86 was the whole ranch headquarters and everything. So we saw that as a threat. Luckily, we prevailed. Uh, and then the other one was, uh, was, was, was family disharmony. Uh, you know, there wasn't always, uh, you know, uh, the same idea that on uh, the family side. Uh, you know, some people said, no, we don't want people over here. My grandmother, my great aunt were, were, hey, this is our place and we don't want other people to come in. And so we had to do kind of a, a lot of different talking through things and, and mind shifting to the point where we were going to welcome people. So we entered into the, the, the Japanese tourist business. We had one market, uh, Japanese tourists, in 19, uh, 1985, and we were all things to uh, uh, recreation. As you can see, we had jet skis, we had scuba, we had uh, bikes, we had a gun range, we had helicopters, we had all kinds of different things. And so our our marketing ploy was, uh, was be efficient with your time. The Japanese uh, visitor spent an average of four days in Hawaii so we could be, you know, come see the beautiful part of Hawaii, do as many things as you possibly can, and we'll package it all together and we'll give you a, we'll, we'll give you a great experience. So that, uh, that um, 
was, uh, was, was, was definitely good. Uh, we filled a niche. Uh, we grew tremendously in the next uh, five years, 85 to 89, was, uh, were, were great. I was a genius, and <laughs> at least I thought so. <laughs> but the, the, the family was happy, everything was good. Of course, not everything stays the same, and, and things do change. Um, the uh, things did change. Uh, the, there's a financial meltdown in, 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 uh, in Japan. There was something called the SARS. There was the Gulf War. There's a lot of different things. The, the, the competition got fierce in the, in the Japanese market. There's activity companies popping up here and there. And so, so that really made us retrench and think, okay, we can't continue like this. This is not gonna, this is not gonna work for us for the long run. How do we broaden our markets? How do we, how do, we do things differently? And so we, we, we started to look and say, um, what's next? So part of that was, was, again, with the family side and everything else, I was uh, fortunate enough to convince my family to get an, uh, some outside members on our board of directors that helped us uh, kind of mitigate some of the family issue, got a little bit of outside perspective in, uh, we changed our, our, our time of operation. We did a lot of things, but what drove a lot was, was focusing inward and, and, and looking at a mission statement. Uh, and and uh, so this, you can read it, Kulo's mission is to be a role model as stewards of the land by preserving, protecting, and, and enhancing the natural beauty and culture while developing recreational and agricultural enterprises compatible with the environment and maximizing economic return. I was part of a business organization and I thought, well, this is great. We're going to put it all into one kind of huge mouthful. It, it did really speak to everything that, uh, that, that we thought was important. So this was a, a helpful thing for us to kind of guide us in the right direction. So a couple of the things that were, were helpful were one, getting outside ownership, outside uh, uh, influence on the board and really looking at different things uh, and, and how could we do things differently. Um, and again, I, I mentioned we, we did a lot of different things. We started to, to look at new markets. Actually, I remember in 1994, we, I think we had like you know, 10 westbound people a day and 250 Japanese people a day. And it's kind of interesting when you're doing that because the 10 are not all that happy. And, uh, and so you know, it, it, it's really interesting that process to go through. But it was during that process that, uh, that, uh, that, that we really started to solidify a kind of a direction for the future. The main thing that helped us, uh, that, uh, helped us uh, really launch into the, to the future was, was convincing the board and, and our family to invest in what we called the new visitor center. Up until that point, all of our food and beverage was, uh, was, was you know, prepared in a kitchen in, in, in Honolulu, brought out. We subcontracted a small retail area. And we were a place to do activities, but we really did, we were infrastructure weak. And so, uh, 1999, uh, we, we we got the authority to go to, uh, put in the permit application for uh, what we called the new visitor center. And uh, and after four years of uh, permitting and one year of building, actually three years of permitting, one year of building, this was opened on June 15th of uh, of 2004. So that heralded the, the, really the beginning of the growth of the company. So, uh, so that was, uh, was huge. Um, of course, prior to that, 2004 came after 2001, and, and I just want to you know, remember, because we just passed uh, September 11th, and that was a, a devastating thing. I mean, it was de devastating for everybody, everybody in, in the whole world, and, and us included as a company. We just uh, we lost several million dollars in the period between uh, the late 90s uh, to, to, to 2004. So that was, that was, that was definitely dicey. Um, so we're also looking at this time of, of rebranding. Uh, and, and, you know, we got new markets now. We're saying, okay, you know, what are we, how, how are we going to go forward and how we're going to communicate our message and we wanted to be all things to all people but you know during this process again all as, as leaders and as, as everybody you want to continue to learn throughout and I was learning more about branding and 
and I went to the mainland to to the school to uh, to to learn about that and okay. What does that mean? What does a brand mean? Well, you need to focus on a few things that are you're true to, that mean a lot to, to you, to the employees, and that are recognizable and basically a promise to your customer. So the things that we thought were the pillars of our brand, which were really the key strengths of the company, were the natural beauty. Uh, we definitely have one of the most beautiful places. I'm, I'm biased for sure, but a lot of people think so. Uh, the history and the culture, uh, you know, there, there's, there's definitely a, a fascinating history, uh, you know, the cultural significance, but it's not just the history and the culture, it's how you tell stories about the history and the culture. For those of you in the tourist business, how you tell that story is, uh, is really important. And then the thing that, uh, that was just part of what we did was the stewardship piece, you know, that. Um, we came from a long line of people who cared for the property and, and didn't compromise on that. And it's just who we were and what we did, but we realized that it was actually something that resonated with our, our employees and our customers, our ability to attract good people and the ability for the, to create a sense of awe in the, in the customer was really tied to stewardship and preservation. And so that was, a, that was another thing we decided was a, was a key platform, uh, branding platform. And then the other thing, I mean, all of you live out here, uh, and, you know, we're extremely fortunate that we just have an amazing employee base. And, and even though we have this incredible scenery and then we have, uh, we have uh, you know, a, a great story with the history and the culture and the stewardship, one of the, one of the, the most common feedback uh, things that we get is, wow, the staff is really great. And so, we thought we'd not only you know, appreciate that and work to, to attract and retain really good employees, but we'd say, okay, we're gonna try to leverage that and, uh, and, and, uh, into, into a brand. And so all of those kind of things, you know, take, take a conscious effort to, uh, to, um, to, to focus on and to, to use to go forward. So we kept on looking at everything and so this is we, we did refine our, 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 our mission statement you know the other one was uh, was we have mission and vision the, the old mission statement was was now our vision but the mission was really to enrich people's lives by preserving our land and celebrating its its history so we we did a little twist on uh, we, we still have had our old one but we wanted to do more, we wanted to be more, we wanted to actually affect uh, people, not just do what we do for, for ourselves. And then again, the values, uh, showing love, caring, compassion for one another, malama, aloha malama, and laulima, and po'okela. So those are, those are the, the things we try to, if we want to be the Hawaiian company, if we want that to be part of our, our reputation, we translate things into, into uh, the, Hawaiian, the Hawaiian language. And so this was, uh, this was our new refined mission, vision, and values. Um, still not happy. <laughs> we're, we're doing well, but, uh, but one of the th things I would leave anybody who's a, an entrepreneur is no matter what you're doing, keep looking on how you can do it better. So, so we're, we weren't happy. Um, so we, we went through another branding process. Um, uh, I think Pono had mentioned that I'm on the board of uh, uh, Hawaii Visitors and Convention Bureau. Uh, one, of their board, uh, one of their employees is actually on our board and, and I really liked what they're doing. I think they're doing a great job at HPCB. And, uh, and they use this guy, Steve Wright, who's mentioned up here. Uh, and so I contacted him and he helped us go through a whole nother branding process. So one of the, the, goal, the goals, as you can see up there, we wanna simplify the way we talk about Kualoa. You know, one of the problems that we had was Kualoa Ranch. You know, we love it, you know, it's been a ranch forever, but I thought that was too narrow. You know, a lot of people may look at ranch and say, well, what is ranch? And so we wanted to be able to simplify the way we talk about it. We want to make it easier for the guests to share their stories, differentiate the experience from that of the competition, make the Kualoa experience more appealing and easier to understand for the uh, potential guests. These are all, you know, interesting parts of the process that we went through with uh, Steve Wright. And, uh, and the other thing uh, we went, is, is the what is Kualoa. At the very beginning I was saying what is it and it's so many different things. And, uh, and so 
make a whole long story short, we did come up with a new branding platform. And uh, it's still based on those so all, all the same uh, pillars. But instead of Cool Ore Ranch, uh, we became something new. It didn't change who we were, but we, we, we did change the way we tried to look at ourselves and communicate. And that is Kualoa, the world's most famous private nature reserve where legends are made. And uh, that's a, so that's our new kind of branding platform, slogan, name, everything. And, and we use it in different ways in different audiences. Our letterhead says Kualoa Ranch Nature Reserve. Uh, I think you'll see that on our signs uh, soon on the outside. Sometimes we use the whole thing. Sometimes we use just part of it. But we, uh, we're happy, our team is happy. It seems to resonate with our customers because a nature reserve is a much bigger uh, uh, umbrella than and a ranch fits under there. Everything that we do fits underneath uh, the, the kind of the term nature reserve. Um, we talked extensively about the, the, the claim, the world's most famous private nature reserve. Uh, you know, we actually looked at what is a nature reserve. Google nature reserves, and a couple things come up in uh, in Africa, and, and 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 so. But we claim the world world's most famous because we have well over two dozen major motion pictures, all kinds of TV. So the the the, the amount of times people throughout the entire world world have seen Kualoa will pr undoubtedly eclipse everything else because. You're talking up in the hundreds of millions of, of, of views type of thing. Um, so, and then again, where legends are made, uh, you know, it kind of honors, not kind of, it does honor the, the, the cultural historic past, but also the modern notion that if a visitor comes to our place with his eight and 10 year old, they're creating their own legends. And so it's a, it's a past tense and a present and a future tense application to that and so so in the whole branding process we definitely look at all kinds of aspects of it um, so this is just uh, kind of a little bit of what we are today again uh, from according to the Pacific Business News uh, we're the 11th largest attraction in the state and uh, actually the fourth way behind Polynesian Culture Center by the way um, the fourth it's not affiliated with a national park uh, we employ about 290 employees. Uh, one of our biggest impediments to growth is not finding enough employees. Uh, uh, we have all kinds of different, the adventure tours are, and we categorize different things and uh, horses, ATVs, and zip line. Uh, we have narrated tours, which is, uh, go to different parts of the ranch. Um, movie site tour, jungle uh, expedition, ocean voyage, ancient fish pond garden tours, and each one of those geographically oriented tours, talks about history, movies, agriculture, flora, fauna, all of that kind of stuff. And so it's just an experience going through a piece of property and our entertainers, like the Polynesian Culture Center has all a host of entertainers, our entertainers are the guides. So that's our interaction piece there. And, uh, and then uh, we've, we've done a lot of different cultural exhibits, you know, since the culture is so important to us on each one of the tours we have you know, whether it's a kauhale or a, a replicated uh, heiau or a replica of the hokulea or something like that. We, we build these things because along the lines of a, a picture is worth a thousand words. This is our new brochure, not a very good picture of it, but, uh, but and this is just part of it since it's a fold out thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, we're continually trying to, uh, to, to, to sharpen the saw, so to speak. So our newest tours, we're always trying to find new markets uh, and our, our, some of the new markets that we see are more lifestyle driven instead of just trying to create a destination and attract people to the destination, try to pre pre develop a product to appeal to pre personal taste, pe uh, people's tastes. So one tour goes through the entire ranch looking at different movie sites. It's for the people who like People Magazine. And then uh, the, another one is a taste of Kualoa, so it's geared toward the people like Bon Appetit or foodie type people. Uh, these are relatively slow to start off. We tried to make them premium tours. We bought a Mercedes Sprinter van instead of, uh, you know, 1985 school bus. Uh, so that's what these are. Um, we still do a lot of sports events. Uh, we just had the Spartan race. I think there was 
8,000 people that came and beat themselves up over the weekend uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, the Xterra Trail Run, we're, we're lucky because this is a series that goes through the entire country and it might be in, in several uh, different uh, uh, countries as well. And we're the world championship and we, uh, uh, location, so that's nice. It happens the week before the marathon in December. And then there's a locally uh, uh, produced obstacle race as well, the Makahiki, and it's just great for us. One, you know, we're a private company, we want to make money and, and, and these things are good because we can continue our normal operations as well as having this kind of thing. But it really is, is uh, local marketing and it feels good to have local people come out and, and have a great time. People when they go out and do sports events, they, uh, they just, just a good feeling. They, the vibe is nice because they appreciate being there. Uh, again, we do 200 something weddings a year in, in a couple of different venues. Uh, the movies, the list is huge. The last Jurassic Park, uh, you know, 51st date, Dates, Mighty Joe Young, Along Came Polly, uh, Tears of the Sun, uh, just uh, Godzilla, just when talk, uh, just we got a big, big long list. Uh, Amy Schumer and uh, Goldie Hawn just finished a movie. They're building a set for another movie right now. They're scouting for another one right now. It's, it's, it's puzzling, we make a concerted effort to try to be film friendly and it's obviously worked, but we found out uh, uh, that as time goes on, what, what they really like about us is we're so diverse that they can put their whole base camp in one place and not move it. When Jurassic Park and Jurassic, well, Jurassic World is a more recent one, they burn a million bucks a day in production. So when they don't have to move, they save a lot of money. So that's, uh, that's one of the attributes that we have in the movie business. We're still very much focused on agriculture and we're, we're lucky with our relative success in the, uh, in the um, uh, visitor industry. We're able to focus on R&D and agriculture. So we've got aquaculture, oysters, we have uh, fish, we have beef, we've got, uh, we're gonna start sheep and pigs soon. Uh, we're, we're, we're continuing to really focus on the ag side. Um, we have a stewardship, we have a crew of three people just uh, fighting invasive species and things like that. Uh, we still have an education program, about 12,000 kids a year come. Um, I know, so this is one of the last slides. Uh, if, to leave anything, I just, this is just a brainstorming thing. Uh, as you go forward, seek mentors. Really seek people out that emulate the kind of things that you, you want to be and you, you think are good. Read good books. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people have read good, and this is not an exhaustive list. The last one, The Four Agreements, it's a tiny little book. I recommend it highly. Uh, push yourself, communicate well, expect much of yourself and the people you work with, forgive, let new information in. Don't convince yourself that you know the answer. Uh, once you know th that you know the answer, you should probably think again. And then uh, hire consultants. That's, you know, for if you have the authority to hire consultants. But uh, we're always, uh, Stephen Covey, you know, sharpen the saw. Keep looking at different things. Analyze metrics. Metrics are really important. And, uh, and then, uh, again, can't uh, underestimate focusing on your employees. So again, just leave you with Kulo's uh, mission, which is uh, to enrich people's lives by preserving our land and celebrating its history. So with that, I ask you for any questions. <laughs>